America's Democratic Party went into the midterm elections expecting a tough ride. They ended up with a thrashing as voters delivered a huge victory to the Republicans, who now control both the Senate and the House of Representatives. US politics was hopelessly gridlocked even before the midterms. Is it about to get even worse, or will we actually start to see President Barack Obama and Congress finding a way of working together? Hello and welcome back to Analysis Review. With me here to discuss the consequences of the US midterms are Tom Packer, visiting fellow at Warwick University, and from Washington, Ed Luce, our chief US commentator. Welcome to you both. Tom, start with you. Is, are we now just heading for yet more dysfunction gridlock? All these terms become, that we've become really used to. Or is there going to be perhaps scope for... Well, of course, if one goes over the last few years as a well, whole, there's actually been quite a lot of policy change passed. And I think there's a very important change in how the, dis, the, the gridlock works, in that if the Republicans control the Senate, they can then set the agenda to a degree they haven't been able to previously. So they can force Democrats to vote on legislation that's popular. And, um, and so I think you're likely to see movements, one, where Democrats are willing to give in to Republicans, and secondly, where the Republicans are um, and President Obama are able to come to agreements. And I think there are a few areas where that could happen. Great. Ed, I mean, would you share that view, or do, I mean, sitting there in Washington? There are two or three areas, discrete policy areas, like fast-track trade, negotiating authority, um, and perhaps moderate reforms to Obamacare where you can imagine them having common ground. There's one or two dimensions to corporate tax reform that would fit in the same category. But this is very much a mood-driven town. Um, and the battle that uh, President Obama and John Boehner, the Speaker of the, the um, House of Representatives, have already um, become mired in, you know, within 24, 48 hours of the election over immigration reform, um, has turned the mood very sour, very, very rapidly. Um, President Obama, um, you know, has promised to uh, issue an executive order, um, basically making it harder to deport illegal immigrants. And John Boehner said that would poison the well, and that uh, essentially the president it would not be in his right mind if he did that. So with that kind of atmospheric, it's not got off to a very good start. Right. Well, I mean, Tom, just... <laughs> Picking up on a little bit of what you were saying earlier on, saying there's various areas the Republicans now could push on. Mm. We, tell us a bit more around that. I mean, Ed flagged some were discrete policy areas. What, what do you think they're going to be pushing for? Um, I think f the Republicans are by far the more pro-free trade, the more pro-FT party, one might say. So, uh, so in, the, for the rest of the world, this could be good news. I mean, a, those are in favour of free trade, like the, the big um, free trade agreements. Um, like most people watching this video, yeah. probably. Exactly. Um, I think there's likely to be movement on that front. I think if, if Obama is willing to agree to some tax reform, or even if he wanted to, though I doubt he will, entitlement reform, you could have moved on that, uh, on that front. And I I think they're also likely to give a bit of ground um, on some stuff which is more partisan. So I think it's a very good chance the Keystone Pipeline to Canada will get approved. I think there's a good chance there'll be reductions on, there'll be removals of restrictions on the oil exports and things like that. But um, President Obama obviously has huge power to decide whether the big reforms happen or not because he's got his veto. <laughs> right. I mean, Ed, the president is about to set off on a trip to Asia. He probably is, is, is looking forward to that, to getting out of, of the, the, the mood in the city that you've just described. Do you think that, that you know, we are going to see in, the, in the, the final two years of his presidency that he will focus a lot more on foreign policy and just, you know... Yes, uh, I do. Yeah. I think events will force him to, you know, ISIS, Ebola, Putin, and so forth. These have been thrust on his agenda, so that's already been the case um, in the last two years. Um, but I think it'll become more so, even more so in the next two. But even then, you can't really detach foreign policy from domestic policy. For example, he goes to China next week for the APEC summit of the big Asia-Pacific economies. And his big goal will be to move ahead on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the big trade um, negotiation between the U.S. and its Pacific partners. He's not going to get very far down that road if he doesn't have fast-track negotiating authority from, um, from Congress. Um, I'm not quite as sanguine um, as to whether Congress will give, give that to him. Republicans are traditionally pro-free trade, but the Tea Party faction in the House are much more skeptical of globalization, but also very loath to give President Obama, who they demonized, the um, carte blanche power that comes with fast-track negotiating authority. So I'm a bit more skeptical about whether that's going to happen. And we should remember that since NAFTA 
was passed 20 years ago, 21 years ago, um, the North American free trade area. Presidents have been given fast track authority for five out of those 20 years. It's very, very hard to get it, even in better circumstances than this. And I think, therefore, Obama's maneuver um, on the global stage as a foreign policy president is very, very much linked to whether he can get traction with a resurgent Republican Party back here at home. Right, thanks. We're almost out of time, but I can't resist asking one last question to both of you, but if you could be as brief as possible, just how does this all feed into 2016, the next presidential election, of course, now that these midterms? I mean, is this, are we seeing the comeback of the Republicans that could even take them to the White House? Oh, they definitely could. Democrats can still definitely win, but the fact is probably the biggest single reason for this election was how unpopular President Obama was. And if he's equally unpopular in 2016, it's going to be very hard for any Democrat to win, just like it was very hard for any Republican in 2008. But of course, things could change. Ed? Yes, I'd agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, Hillary's moment begins now. Washington is very much a horse race, politics driven town. And everybody's attention is turning from President Obama's predicaments to Hillary Clinton's ambitions. She'll set up an exploratory committee, which is the first step towards a presidential declaration sometime in the next few weeks. And from then on, I'm afraid she'll be the story. Right. Ed Luce, Tom Packer, thank you both very much. And thank you for watching. For more on this story and other topics covered by our analysis team, please go to ft.com forward slash analysis. Until the next time, goodbye.